I think we're live. Um, we're about a minute, a little less than a minute away from start time, so I won't get started, but uh, I won't get started until then. Say something so Iska knows you're here. Oh, that's just for the people that are oh. coming on. Oh, yeah, here they all come. All right, all right. Very cool. All right, it's five o'clock. So, hey, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name's Tom Richmond, and I'm going to do a little uh, live demo here. We're live from my studio in drizzly, dreary, not quite winter anymore, but still not very nice out Minnesota. And today was our first day of being in sheltered in place for two weeks. So, yay us. We're in the same boat as everybody else, but hey, this will, this will be fun. So if, if uh, anybody here hasn't heard about this, I'm doing this uh, little project where uh, it's called the Daily Caricature, And every day I pick a subject and people can uh, do a caricature of this person. And uh, we have a little Facebook group and you can post it on there. Or you can post it on Instagram or, or Twitter with the hashtag uh, Tom's Daily Caricature. And it's just a fun thing. Um, and today's subject is Ian McShane. So I thought I would wait and do my daily caricature here live. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. And I've see, as you can see here, I've got some reference pictures uh, printed out. I usually would use an iPad, but I, I can't manipulate all that stuff altogether under the camera. So I thought I would just print it out. Um, I always print out multiple photographs of whoever I'm doing a subject, uh, uh, whoever my subject is, if I have that luxury, because um, one photograph often won't tell you the whole story. In fact, photos have a tendency to lie, uh, depending on the angle and, and lighting and stuff. And to really get a sense of somebody's face, you have to have a few different angles. So I always try to find a um, a profile too, if I can. I mean, I'm not going to use all these. I'm just going to base them off of probably one photo. But if I look at these different photos, they tell me different things. Um, you know, in this particular photo, it's a very studio quality sort of picture of him. He looks like he's got, you know, he's got kind of a longer face. But in all these photos, you can see, I think he's got a very wide squat face. So that's how I'm going to interpret it. So this one would have thrown me off a little bit. Um, some of the other ones are I think, telling me a little bit more about uh, the subject. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to draw, um, I'm going to do like an ink and wash version of him here. So I'm going to do a sketch first in just pencil, uh, and then I'll ink it with a dip pen, and then I'll do some washes on it uh, too. So hopefully I've got, got this in a good place so that you can see it um, without the, the comments covering it up too much. Uh, okay, so uh, I always start with the head shape, right? So um, for me, this guy, he just really just seems to have a very wide... Is that, is that dark enough? Can you see these lines? Um, mine's frozen. Oh. Okay, now they're, they're back. Okay. Um, that he's got a very wide head shape. Uh, so I'm going to really, I really want to give him a wide shape here. Um, I don't want to draw too dark because I'm going to want to erase these pencil lines, but... Um, his eyes, he's got very heavily lidded eyes, too. Like, um, he's sort of got this uh, kind of evil, evil stare um, with these really heavy lids. And it is hard to see. Is it? Okay. Well, I, I don't want to... Position's wanna, good. Okay. I don't want to draw too dark. Okay. Um, because, uh, like I said, my ink it. So, I'll just do a real quick pencil sketch here. Um Another thing I, that I noticed about this guy is that he's got like a lot of white underneath his, his pupils and irises. He, he's got these big, white, long, sort of droopy, droopy dog eyes. Um, so I'm going to want to kind of uh, make sure I capture that. So when I, when I do, uh, uh, when I approach a caricature, I, I have, there's sort of two different levels of, um, of caricaturing somebody. And one of them is what I call the under caricature or the structural caricature. And that's really mostly about the bone structure and the muscles and the, the meat of the face, like what uh, the, the physical nature of the face. And actually, that is something that doesn't really change much with expression. Um, uh, you know, if a person's got a long face, it doesn't matter that much if they're smiling or, or, or frowning or whatever. So you want to, um, a lot of the, the beginning caricature uh, 
uh, decisions I make are based on just the physical nature of the face. And then once I get those decisions in place, then I start thinking more about what I call the surface uh, aspects of the face. That's the expression. That's what pe what the person is doing with those uh, with those features. So things like the droopy eyes and um, and the heavy lids. Those are more of a of a surface thing. Whereas the wide face, the smaller chin. Uh, um, his, he's got a lot of width up here, like right above his eyes and right in his temple areas, like s s the widest part of his face. So I want to um, make sure that I'm exaggerating those elements when I'm uh, at this early stage. And then I let the, um, what you would call the, uh, the surface stuff sort of creep in as I develop it. So, so I'm going to give him kind of a wide squat face here. So I'm kind of basing it on this picture up here. It's like, I really like that expression. Would you like to hear some of the people who are here? Sure. Uh, Big Al's here. All right, Al. Uh, Dave Schneider. Marco Antonio Garcia. Tom Farachi. Farachi. Farachi, I recognize that name. He's oh, the yes, president. He's the president. Steve Newman. Alfred Reed. Jamie Marie, uh, Ramirez, Paul Robert Smith is watching. All right. Uh, Richard Childs, Bill Barrett, Steve Nyman, Mark Young. Oh, Celestia is on. Hi, Celestia. Susie Walker. So this is my uh, right. wife, the lovely Anna, is um, is uh, being my wing girl here, yes. doing the. Uh, Telling me about comments and questions and stuff, so I don't have to uh, to keep diverting my eye. So if anybody's got any questions or wants to ask me anything, go for it, and I'll yeah. just kind of talk through things. Brent's T is here. Alfred Reed is here from Dublin. Yeah. Jim Batts is watching. Hi, Jim. Uh, I love this. Uh, Drizzly dreary sounds like Harry Potter character created by Stan Lee. <laughs> That's what Eric Johnson says. Uh, Joanne Stephens. Tammy Johnson, Eddie Pitchman, Pitch, Pittman is watching. Hi, Eddie. Eddie Pitchman? Pitchman. Who's Pitt he? <laughs> he said today on um, Facebook that he's going to have to get your book because he's <laughs> got to kick up his caricatures. Uh, Ken Kanafu. Oh, you got Chad Engel from India. Oh, no, right. from Indiana. <laughs> Never mind. Um, Dave Schneider. Joey, um, your number one fan, is watching. All right. Oh, Dave Schneider asked who I am. That's me. Ash Stryker. Lauren Bernson is watching. Eric Sweetman. Nick Nix. That's a great name. Mel Northrup. Hi, Mel. Wow, a lot of a lot of workshop alumni yeah. tuning in here. You guys are, this is all old hat for you guys. You've seen me do all this. Jeff Williamson, Jeff Palmberg. Oh, Celeste says hi, Lily. <laughs> Mario Mange from Brazil. Somebody's asking if I'm going to read off a whole, all 101 guests. Maybe. No. That's Ben. Oh, I'm not? Okay. All right, well, there's no question. Oh, is that a mechanical qu pencil? There's a question. Uh, yep. It's a five millimeter draftmatic mechanical pencil. I, I, I sort of switched these. I used to use these um, uh, pencils that you put the leads in and they were clutch adapter and then you'd have to sharpen it all the time. And uh, now I'm using the, I, I like to use these mechanical ones for the rough sketches and don't have to sharpen them. Not too thrilled with this. Uh, missing something in this eye over here. Kendall Hart from Honduras. Oh, Theodosis from your, he was in Germany. No, nope. nope. he was in London. In London one, that's right. Yeah. That's where we met him. He's on. Lee Savignon is from London. And says, are you working on your new book yet? Which one? <laughs> Sorry, Eddie. He says, hi, it's me, Eddie Pitchman. <laughs> Oh, okay, Sam Sutton's wondering what you're doing with your non-drawing hand. It's the same question you had from the last time, so. It's, uh, it's right here. 
while you're holding it that oh, way. Oh, sometimes I, I sometimes I steady my, my hand. Or you'll really, when I'm inking, you'll see me do it big time. I steady my drawing hand with my other hand sometimes, especially when I'm over on this side of the paper. Uh, I don't know why. It's just something I've always done. Uh, Wendy Gaines Uchi says, Hi, Tom. I'm mad about you. Oh, hey, Wendy. Did she? Did you ever get your uh, your mad cover with uh, the, the tennis guy that you had me draw? Must have. Sent that out a while yeah. ago. Uh, Miguel from Argentina. So right now this is just sort of coming together. Uh, I don't want I don't want to get too detailed with my pencils because I'm going to ink this thing. And one of the first things they talk about uh, when anybody who ever teaches about inking will tell you that you don't want to trace your pencil lines. You want to um, you want to do draw with the ink, right? So if you're if you're too tight with your pencil, you're going to end up just trying to copy the same the same line thicknesses and and all that kind of thing that the sensibilities that you got with your pencil line and that sucks the life out of the inks so so you want to purposefully leave it kind of uh, uh loose so that when you go in and do the inking you're, you're going to do a lot of drawing with the inks and to that end so i'm going to i'm going to stop now i mean there's a lot of drawing left to do here if it's it's uh, not anywhere near complete but i want to i want to do more of that drawing with the inks so uh, this is a trick that a lot of um, that I learned in illustration uh, or college actually. Uh, this is a kneadable eraser, right? And uh, when you do a, a, a drawing in pencil like this and you're going to ink it, you want to knock it down so that you, you sort of lightly erase a lot of the pencil lines. It's a lot lighter. So when you go in and ink it, you don't have to, to ink the pencil or you know erase the pencil lines um, okay, Vic too wants much. To know what eraser are you using? It's a kneadable eraser. It's one of these things that looks like a piece of clay, right? So, but if you, if I was to take this kneadable eraser and go like this on top of the drawing, it would it would smear it all over the place and you'd have, it'd just make a real mess. So what you do is you take your eraser and you roll it into a tube like this. And then you just roll it back and forth over top of your drawing. And it does what's called knocking down the drawing so that it lightens it up, but it doesn't smear it around, and it just makes it a lot. Uh, th then, you, then you're more apt to draw with the inks, you know, because you're because you're not seeing a hard pencil line. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to ink this thing with a, um, a simple pen nib. This is a Crow Quill. It's a Hunt 102, and the ink I'm using is a Pelicans Drawing Ink A. Okay, it's real simple India ink, waterproof. Um, and, uh, now I'm going to ink this thing. And when I ink, uh, I, I try, I'm going to try to ink it so that you can see the drawing, but I do a lot of turning and twisting around when I'm inking. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this here so I can keep this guy right exactly where I want him. Um, I do a lot of like, I ink upside down, you know, anywhere, any way for me to get the, the kind of line I want. When you ink, you, you want to ink in the, the way that your arm naturally moves okay so it, it's much easier to move away from your body this way uh and you're you've got a natural curve to you know when you when you're working with your elbow and shoulder um and working inward towards your body is very awkward so you always want to ink away from your body so if you got a big line rather than trying to draw it inward you turn your paper and draw it outward somebody wants to know what kind of paper that is oh this is a strathmore 500 piece of bristol just a scrap piece of head laying around all right so i have to kind of hunch over my board here when i when i ink so one of the things about inking is you can't ink timidly like you you can't uh you can't be real tight and like this with your lines because you you'll lose all the spontaneity of uh of the inks that way so you have to you have to kind of be very um know gestural and quick uh with your ink lines so that you maintain some kind of uh some life to them terry ellie wants to know how do you decide when to ink old school or versus digital uh, i never ink digitally all my inks are old school color i do digitally 
all the time. But I never, uh, uh, virtually almost never ink digitally. Yeah. <clears throat> Roger Ash from Wisconsin. Michael Hogan, Tallahassee, from the Atlanta 2018 workshop. Says yeah. Hi. Hey, Michael. Uh, Wendy says, love it. He loves it. We all love it. So they got the. Oh, cool. Um, Zach Wallen thing is on. Um, somebody from Brazil. So another thing when I'm inking is uh, I have a tendency to uh, this is this is a terrible um, way to do it actually, but I have a tendency to to work one area like completely done, like I'm pretty much done with that eye and I haven't done a damn thing with the rest of it. It's it's probably a lot smarter to ink like big lines and, and, and then work your way into smaller lines. But um, it's, I just, I, it's just not the way I think. So I tend to work in spurts around different areas of the, of the drawing and like I'll do the eyes almost completely and move on to something else. Um, Jenny asks, do you ever keep the pencil version and light box it or ink on a new sheet of paper? Yeah, I actually, I've been doing that a lot more lately, um, especially with, uh, um, with jobs. Um, I, in fact, I do a lot more of my pencils like this pencil rough sketch I'll do digitally. Um, and then, uh, just put that on the light table and sometimes I'll just go straight on to the, uh, I'll just ink straight on the light table um, as opposed to ever doing any pencil lines at all. Although I'm not a big fan of that because, um, I don't know, uh, something about the light shining up in your face and the, that sort of distracts you and, and you, you, not, you don't really feel, I, I don't feel like I'm getting the, the um, I'm really seeing the lines the way that they're going to be seen once the light box is taken away. So um, I try to completely, I try to avoid that. Mostly what I do nowadays is more of a hybrid of that where I will, um, uh, I will draw some aspects of it in pencil, like especially the faces. If, if there's caricature involved, I will do a, a pencil drawing of the faces, but then like some of the backgrounds or bodies or stuff like that, I'll just leave that uh, just to be done on the light box. Um, so I'll, I'll turn off the light box and ink faces and turn it back on and ink bodies. And um, it's kind of a hybrid sort of a approach, but it uh, works nicely for speed. Wendy wonders if this method would be harder if you were left-handed, like her. So mm, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think so. I think you just, just like a left-handed person draws left-handed, they would ink left-handed, I guess. I mean... Um, Alejandro's wondering if we can zoom in a little bit. Oh, maybe. This might get in my way then. How's that? See, I, it's delayed, so I can't tell you. Oh. Eddie Pittman says, is inking away from your body the way most pen inkers work, like Drucker or say Gutfredson? I can't say Gutfredson. Um... I guess I, I don't know that. Um, that That's the way I was taught. Um, I got a little uh, inking lesson from Sam Viviano, uh, MAD's art director and a longtime artist for MAD. And um, he showed me how to, you know, to ink in a more natural way. I also got a little inking lesson from Joe Rubenstein once. Uh, he's a, a long longtime uh, comic book inker and artist. Uh, he used to be an assistant for Wally Wood, actually. And uh, um, my buddy Ed Steckley and I went over to Joe's studio once and just sat around and watched him ink uh, a comic book page one day. And he was showing us a bunch of stuff. And that was one of the things he, he said, too, is that it's better to move away. Oh, we got lots of questions here. Um, oh, somebody wants to know if you're training at home with the gym shut. They are all shut in the UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well... Um, that's a little bit of a problem because I actually had a surgery scheduled next week for a double hernia, which uh, I had to cancel because uh, all elective and non-crucial um, non uh, surgeries are 
are suspended during the coronavirus thing here in the in Minnesota. So uh, not only is my gym closed, but I, I I can't really do much at home either because I've got a a hernia. So bad news. Your niece Brittany's watching. Your sister Tammy's watching. Wow. Yes. Lee wants to know what age did you start caricature? I didn't really. Uh, think about caricature as uh, something that I was interested in until uh, I was in college, actually. Okay, I got a job. I got a job doing uh, caricatures at a, at a Six Flags theme park down near Chicago um, in uh, summers between college uh, semesters. And uh, that's when I kind of fell in love with caricature. Before that, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought maybe I, 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 for a while I wanted to do comics. And then, you know, maybe I thought I could do uh, advertising art or commercial art or album covers or something like that. Um, I guess I'm, I'm glad I didn't go into album covers. <laughs> do you ever use micron pans or something similar? And do you use a brush? Uh, I do use a brush sometimes. I wasn't planning on using one here for inking. Um, probably I would say 90% of my lines are, are pen lines. Um, but I do use a brush for certain types of lines. Like I might use a brush for his hair here, but he doesn't really have, you know, any any really long, uh, intense hair to draw. So I probably won't, wouldn't bother. But um, big, big, long sweeping lines like you would use for hair, for example. Um, I'll use a brush for that. Uh, certain effects are great for, with brush work. Okay. Uh, what is the best paper to use when drawing live? Uh, I like a nice um, uh, kind of a 67 pound Bristol is actually what I use and it's it's got a, a bit of a vellum surface on it so it's not real smooth it's got a little bit of tooth um, it's just uh, it's nothing special but uh, it's just a good paper that takes and I use pencil when I draw live not marker so um, it isn't that important I don't have to worry about bleeding or any of that kind of stuff so um, that, that paper is real nice for that. Joe Bloom is watching. Oh, Fred, I think I just lost all my things because it went down. Yeah, I got to go. Yeah, okay. Uh, Lawrence says, hernia out. Sorry, Tom. Yeah. It's a bummer. trying to, I, I know that the drawing keeps creeping down the, pa the paper. It's very awkward for me to work this high up on the board. I'm usually way down here, but that's where all the, <laughs> the comments are. So I can't work down there. So this, this is not, this is an awkward position for me to be doing this. And I'm just going to do my best. Bill Parrott says being left-handed, I wonder how he's doing this with his right hand. <laughs> So another question that a lot of people ask me um, when it comes to, about inking, for example, is how long does one of these pen nibs last? Um, I'm super uh, heavy handed, so I really beat up these pen nibs. I bet when I'm doing work for MAD, for example, uh, I'll maybe go through two or three nibs over a course of a five or six page um, uh, job. It's, they just they, they lose this spring and the snap and, and it ends up getting mushy and um so Teresa Farrington just signed on all right hey Oki Bryant Garten says thank you for the free master class you rock you're welcome thanks for being here Bucky Jones is watching but don't do it uh oh behave okay <laughs> Dave Schneider wants to know how do you decide what to ink first uh, that's a good question. I, I, I just sort of jump in and start going. Um, usually I, I'll, I'll start in some area of the face that's the most interesting to me, I guess. And most of the time that that's the eyes. So like for this one, I definitely started in the eyes and, um, uh, but you know, some, sometimes I'll start with, with the big lines, like the outsides of the face, the hair, that sort of thing. Um, no rhyme or reason to it. And the, one of the bad things about working with pen nibs is that the ink stays wet for a really long time. So uh, 
I have to be careful where I'm working here. Like this, these lines are all wet, so I can't go over them anymore right now. If I brought my hand down there, it'd smear. So I've got to, uh, I've got to be careful with that. Um, if I'm doing a, a mad job, for example, uh, I'll try to keep two, two, maybe even three pages going at once. And that way, uh, when one page gets too wet, I can just throw it off to the side and grab another page, which would be dry. And then I can work on that one for a while. And then when that one gets too wet, I'll grab a, a fresh page and um, get to work on that and let the other one dry. And I was just wondering if you ever clean your nibs or if you just replace them. Uh, I do. I don't clean them. What I do is I take an X-Acto knife and I scrape the ink off of them. Uh, that kind of that kind of brings them back to life, actually. Uh, and um, sometimes I can stretch them out. Also, uh, I know there are probably a lot of live caricature artists watching this right now who use marker. And if you use marker as a live caricature artist, you know that you usually have two or three markers in play at once, right? You'll have uh, one that's really just starting to dry out. And it gives you a little bit of a, uh, you know, a nice sort of a dry brush kind of line or something where you can do certain effects. And then you'll have a brush that's sort of right in the sweet or a, a marker that's right in the sweet spot. And then you'll have one that's uh, brand new and really juicy and you'll use it for different parts of the, of the drawing. And I kind of do that with inking too. If I might have a, a, a pen nib that's, that's pretty springy. And it's giving me big thick lines and uh that that one i'll use for um you know the big lines in the hair and the outside of the face and things like that or these kinds of lines and then i'll have a, a brand new nib that's still really tight and that way i that one that's the one i'll use for all the little fine details like little wrinkles and stuff bill beard is wondering if you ever had a face that stymied you um yeah of course everybody does um Usually, I'll figure it out eventually, um, but sometimes I'll look back at it and say, oh, no, I really blew it with that one. Um, and it doesn't seem to be, there's like no rhyme or reason to which ones uh, are going to give you a problem. I remember doing a job for Mad years ago that was, um, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Brokeback Mountain. And uh, I'm watching this movie and I'm thinking, man, Heath Ledger is really going to be hard to draw. He's got this sort of every man, boy next door kind of handsome face that doesn't really have anything particularly interesting about it. Um, and then I'm looking at Jake Gyllenhaal thinking, man, between those eyebrows and the big girly eyelashes and, uh, um, you know, he's just got a zillion things to play with. Uh, it, he's going to be easy. Totally the opposite for me with those two guys. I mean, uh, uh, for whatever reason, um, Heath Ledger just rolled right off the end of my pencil. And uh, I struggled with, uh, with Gyllenhaal. I just couldn't quite get him. So I, mean, I guess you never really know when, which ones are going to give you problems. Um, Debbie's saying, I used, uh, are you still using the inkwell? And which pen was that? I think she came in after you talked about what Oh, so this is a uh, uh, Hunt 102, and a, it's a crow quill pen, and it's sort of like the the, the standard cartoonist pen. Um, and I, I've tried lots of different pen nibs, and I use lots of different pen nibs, but yeah, I always come back to the Hunt 102. I don't know what it is about it. Partly it's because, like I said a little bit earlier, I am really heavy-handed, So, and this is a very stiff pen nib. So you can really, you really have to press hard to get the, a dark line. And it springs back uh, and seems to last a lot longer. Um, look at that little curly Q line right there. That's a total Mort Drucker line. I try to, I try to, elim I try to avoid, you know, over Drucker and Davis sort of lines um, when I'm doing my stuff because it's easy to fall into the, trap of borrowing too much from your idols. Uh, Carrie wants to know, typically how many hours a day do you draw? Uh, I will draw some days um, 20, 18 to 20 hours when I'm on deadline, and other days I will draw zero. Hi, Tom. What ink do you use? This is a Pelican's Drawing Ink A, actually. Uh, it's funny, when you, when, you're an, when you do art for a living and you get used to certain types of um, art materials, 
it's like a universal law that all artists will get very paranoid about their art materials getting uh, being discontinued or um, no longer being made or being made poorly or something like that. So I, I spent a lot of time trying to find an ink that I really liked. Uh, and I came across this drawing ink A, and this was probably back in the uh, late 90s, um, right before I started for Mad, actually. And uh, I found this Pelican's ink, and it was like perfect. It, it was just the right consistency. It wasn't too thin like Black Magic, and it wasn't too thick like some of the Higgins or some of the FW inks. And uh, I thought I'd finally found my like wheelhouse with inks. And then um, I went out to the art store to buy some of it and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I was like, everybody was out. And I went to a different art store and a different art store and they, they kept on saying, oh, we don't have any of that. Finally, I asked this uh, uh, guy at this art store, what's the deal with the Pelican Zinc? Why does anybody have it? And he said, oh, well, that's a German company and they lost their distributor here in the U.S., so you can't get it imported. That's why everybody's out. And I'm like, crap. And I was out of ink. So I'm thinking, well, who do I know in Germany? So uh, I know Sebastian Kruger. So I called up Sebastian and said, hey, well, could you go over to the art store and, uh, and ask about, you know, ordering me some of this uh, Pelican's drawing ink because I really like it and I'd like to get some. He's like, sure. So uh, uh, he calls me back the next day and he says, well, yeah, we, well, we have to order it. And it comes in different sizes. What which size would you like? Well, I only knew about two sizes. One of them is this size, this one ounce, which I'd had and was empty. And I saw some of them that were in these four ounce bottles. And so I said, um, well, uh, how about the big one, big ones? And he says, sure, how much, how many do you want? And I said, well, how about uh, 24 bottles? I'm going to hoard it. So uh, he said, okay. So he went back and he, he ordered it and he came back and he told me the total. He says, wow, this is really expensive stuff. Are you sure you want 24 bottles? And I said, yeah, I, I would like 24 bottles. I think, you know, that way I don't have to worry about running out for a while. So um, I get this, uh, um, I get the order, I get the bill. Wow, it really was a lot. I thought that's crazy how much this costs, but okay. Um, a couple of months later, I get this box in the mail from Sebastian with, 24 of these bottles, 34 ounces. Uh, I, that was 20 years ago. I just opened my third bottle. So I'm good to go till uh, 2174, according to my calculations. Uh, so I, I should be okay with ink. Tim May wants to know your biggest artistic influences. Oh, that would absolutely be the old school mad guys. Um, a lot of you know a lot of people see my work and instantly think of Mort Drucker, uh, and of course he was a big hero of mine. But actually, Wally Wood uh, and Jack Davis were my two favorite Mad artists. Um, you don't see as much uh, Wood influence in my stuff as uh, as you might think, but actually his his especially his inking work um, was just something that really uh, resonated for me. I also love Jack's work, Mort of course. Uh, Will Elder is another guy who, whose stuff I really loved, but you don't really see it in my work uh, much, but it's just something that um, he was somebody that I really admired too. All right, well, I think I'm done with the line work here. Rick uh, says you probably don't make mistakes but when, when inking, but if you do, what do you do? Uh, well, I use this stuff. Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, it's pretty good. Um, it's a little chalky, uh, but you can actually ink over top of it. Um, so I could like literally ink a big area and then, um, or cover a big area with the white and then ink over top of it a little bit. Um, it does get kind of uh, um, dusty and sort of messed up, uh, but that stuff works pretty good. But to be honest with you, these days, I, I basically do all my uh, corrections uh, in the computer because I do, um, you know, color digitally and uh, I just am able to, uh, to correct it all. So if I have a mistake or something and I'll only correct it um, if I'm gonna sell the original or, or I want the original to hang up somewhere. I have to wait for this to dry, by the way, before right, I can. So I'm gonna ask you some more. So Brian Leslick says, any advice on drawing hands? I'm assuming you have a chapter on that in your book. I do. I talk a little bit about drawing hands in the in my caricature book, The Mad Art of Caricature. 
Um, you know, the great, great thing about hands is every, most people have two of them at the end of their arms. So you've got a, you've got a great model and, you know, I, I'll absolutely pose my hand, uh, if I'm, if I'm struggling with the hand, I'm not going to sit here and, and like beat my head against the wall, trying to figure out how a hand works in my head. If I'm trying to do some complicated hand position, I'll just take a picture of my hand. And so I can see how, how it works. But, um, there's a bunch of things about hands that are important that, you know, like how the knuckles curve, they're not straight. Um, how the, the little pads on your hands, uh, where the pads crease don't not line up with the knuckle. They're like behind the knuckle, the knuckles in front of it on top. It's an interesting, uh, there's, there's a big gap between here's where the knuckle is on your, on the back of your hand. And here's where the, the creases in your finger. It's, it's a long way from that knuckle. This part from the knuckle to the first, from, from your, your knuckle here all the way to your first knuckle, that's a long way. A lot farther than just from the base of your finger to the, to the knuckle. That's another thing that, that people don't think about when they're drawing hands. Hands are very expressive. If you can draw good hands, then then that's a great uh, thing to be able to do. I think you this... saw a lot of that with your Corona pictures yesterday with the long hands of, I not even pretend to pronounce his name. Oh yeah. But those long fingers, that was amazing. Mar Mar Marshala Ali, right? Yeah. Yeah. So many people have such great hands on those drawings. Yesterday. He's got really super. Oops, see, look at just smeared it. He's got super long fingers. That guy. This is do you test your line out on another sheet of paper like? brush artist or go straight to page oh no i test it out i've got a little you can kind of see it right over here this is some some watercolor i was doing but i've got these are little ink lines and those brush lines and stuff usually i have a little scrap paper on the side here and i i test my line out before i go to town on it nick nick says do you think that the tactile feel of the bristol paper adds to the spontaneity of your drawing over the slick surface of a monitor or ipad yeah, and that's that's honestly the reason I still ink. Uh, well, one of the reasons I still ink um, the old-fashioned way, because that that tactile response from the paper and the pen nib and that just it, there's something about it for me that makes that gives me something about the drawing that I don't get when I do it digitally. And I've got nothing against digital coloring or, or digital inking. I mean, I know people who do some fantastic digital ink work. But for me, I just, it just doesn't really, um, I, I, there's a disconnect for me in there somewhere. I love coloring on the computer. And I actually do, like I said, a lot of drawing on the computer these days, like rough layouts and stuff. It's fantastic to do that. But when it comes to lines, like really getting the kind of line I want, it's it just, I have to use a, a, a pen or a brush and paper. So I'm going to add some washes now. So this is a, a, a number six watercolor brush. And what I do when I do ink washes is I actually, I can't really see it. I'm going to see if I can close <laughs> Terry Elliott wants to know if you ever fake a deadline to get out of housework. Uh, yeah, I, come, I sit down here and play video games and tell Anna, I got I to gotta have this done in an hour. You do the dishes. Yeah, that's why. So you just saw, like I, I set up three uh, different values of ink um, washes. I've got like one that's like maybe a 10%. And then one that's like a 25% or a 30% and one that's like about a 40, 45%. So that way I've got three different values that I can play with. And then when I do washes over top of it, they get a little darker each time. So it really gives you a lot of um, a versatility. So, but I start out with my really light ink wash here. Lauren's wondering if you normally go right to the ink with no pencils for details, like on the jacket and stuff, where you added all your details. Do you always just ink those in, or did you sketch those in first? Uh, a lot of the wrinkles and stuff I just inked in. I, I didn't bother with, you know, to draw them in, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Celestia says, might you be talking into selling any of those extra bottles? <laughs> oh, talked into I'm like, pivot. She corrected. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, if people ask me about that. I'm worried I'm going to run out, so no, I don't sell it. 20, 2174 isn't that far away. <laughs> uh, Sam says, Jack Davis did a lot of work for the University of Georgia, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes. He was a huge Bulldog fan. Yeah. Murphy says, why ink when everything is digital? 
Well, a couple of reasons. I have already talked about um, the fact that uh, um, the tactile response of paper and, and pen is something that's important to me. Um, and I just, the, the kind of lines I get, I just don't get digitally my, myself. Um, another reason, uh, I can't sell uh, digital originals, can I? Like Betty there's, wants to know if you sleep. Sure, I sleep. <laughs> I'm actually kind of asleep right now. <laughs> uh, Nick says, you mentioned using a pencil for live gigs. What size do you use and how hard are your leads? I use a three millimeter. Um, it's kind of like, a, it's a clutch adapter type pencil. So it's it's like a three millimeter lead. And then you just, you press down on the end to feed it uh, through. And it's, uh, I use a 4B um, and sometimes a 6B, the 6B I'll use, um, if I'm working outside on really, uh, humid days, believe it or not, it's like the, the more humid the day is, the more moisture is in the air, the grayer your ink is. And, um, then I'll, or your pencil is, and I'll use, uh, a little bit, um, softer lead on those days. Um, Jim is asking if you could do a quick demo of your live pencil drawing because the pencil looks like inks to me. So maybe when you're done with this, if you have extra time, you could do a little pencil so that they can see that. Yeah. Well, this is a great question uh, from Michael J. Klein. Uh, what have you learned from your students? Oh, um, that's one of my favorite things about doing these workshops is I learn stuff, you know. Um, things that are just about, you know, how people might approach um, a caricature, um, I'll see something that, or they'll see something in the face that I didn't see. And, uh, I'll say, oh yeah, look at that. And, and then later on when I'm, when I'm faced with a, a face that has similar features or has similar, uh, makeup, I'll remember that and go, oh yeah, I remember how, um, that person approached that and that really worked good. And I think this face calls for it. So, um, it's been a great learning experience. Um, you know, I learn um, stuff too. So it's, it's really cool. I love it. I, I very uh, much resistant to doing um, a digital version of my workshop, but I think maybe in the coronavirus age, it may be coming. A lot of people are asking about the book 2.0. A lot of people are saying how much they love the book. Um, you can talk a little bit about that maybe. Yeah. Um, the, the second version of the book is, is on hiatus right now. Um, I wanted to do it. Oh, see, look at that. I have to use my whiteout. Um, I wanted, I, I have been working on it and I have some work done on it, but, uh, honestly, um, I've got another book project that's maybe going to take me a good part of a year to do. And I just have to, I can only do one book at a time. So... The other book project is something I'm doing with um, Desmond Devlin, who is a longtime mad writer, a guy who um, I've worked with with a, in a, with a lot of movie and TV parodies in Mad over the years. And he and I um, are doing a Kickstarter uh, of a book of movie and TV parodies. Well, just probably just movie parodies. Um, we're doing uh, movies, you know, new movies. Uh, because Mad doesn't do movie parodies anymore or, or TV parodies, not new ones. Uh, that's something that they cut out when they restructured. And we think that's a sad thing. Dang, look at this mess. Oh, well. Um, and we don't like that. So we're going to be doing our own. And uh, it's probably going to be, we're going to start out with uh, targeting about eight movies. And then we'll have stretch goals to add maybe up to 12 um, we're going to, we're going to do both m new movies and classic movies that Mad never parodied. So kind of, kind of a mix of the two. And, um, you know, if enough people want it, we'll do it. Um, Jack says, I have purchased pencil sketches from your store. Do you use any fix on them? Right. I don't know. There's somebody from Brazil says, love your work. Uh, when you do rough layouts digitally, do you... Oh, we've already talked about the light boxes, printing them on light boxes. Somebody wants to know about 68-pound paper versus 80-pound paper. Why you choose 68 over the heavier paper? 
uh, I get this paper from a, a, a local paper company and um, uh, it's, I don't need any thicker paper. Um, the, the 80 pound is like cardstock or, or virtually almost cardstock and it's still just a little too thick. Um, the 67 pound is perfect. It's, it's, it's a nice weight and it's not that heavy and it's easy to roll up and, um, it's just, it's just really a, a kind of an ideal. What did you wish you knew about drawing when you first started? Um, that's a good question. Um. I guess I wish uh, I I didn't you know I grew up in an in, and and learned about art in a time before the internet and um, I wish I could have been exposed to um, the kind of art and the variety of art that you that you can on a daily basis today. I think that's the most amazing thing about the internet these days is that you, you basically have got the the world at your fingertips and and you there's no excuse for not being able to see and, and learn and and uh, experience um, any kind of art. I think I know how you're going to answer this. How would you approach a lady caricature with a huge nose and big ears? Would you give her a choice of a sketch first? A choice of a sketch? I'm not sure what that means. I think he's saying, would you kind of sketch it and say, well, this is what it's going to look like. Oh. Um... If you're talking about a live caricature situation, absolutely not. You know, I calls them as I sees them. So uh, I'm not a particularly like mean guy caricature artist by any stretch. You know, my my caricatures are pretty likeness orientated. I don't I don't really go to you know get too cruel with the exaggerations at all. Um, I'm I I concentrate a, more on exaggerating and capturing expression. Oh than I do uh, um, like trying to give people big noses and stuff like that. So um, it's really, it's, it's hardly ever an issue for me in that regard. But um, yeah, you know, every once in a while people get bent out of shape. What? Okay. Well, see, I'm, I can see it live, so I know I'm in the middle. Okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, what kind of water color brush is that right now? This is a uh, Dick Blick Masterstroke Finest Red Sable Round. It's it's a Dick Blick uh, art store um, exclusive brush. It's, they're great. They're really nice. They're a lot cheaper than the um, Winsor Newton Series Sevens. That's for sure. And uh, and they're pretty good. Um, I like them for especially for doing washes and stuff. Um, they work nicely. Uh, watercolor. They work nice too. If I'm inking with a brush, I kind of do prefer the the Winsor Newton Series Sevens. They're just they're the the gold standard. Uh, Chad Engel is looking forward to the workshop in Indianapolis. Yay! Yeah, I think that no, hopefully that one will be no problem. That's in September. I, fortunately, I've had to cancel a no, or postpone rather a number of workshops this spring. I had I was supposed to be teaching one right now <laughs> in Minnesota here, the, my illustration one. And we had to cancel that one. Um, the one that's uh, supposed to be next month in Chicago, that one's postponed. Well, I'm looking at dates in October, hopefully, for that one. A um, couple of people are surprised at how small you're working. I thought you worked on a bigger format, but I think it's just that it's only one person. Yeah, this is just dope. Uh, oh, they're asking about a uh, link to the King Kickstarter. It hasn't started yet. No, it has not. Um, I'm actually working on uh, the first uh, parody. Des has written most of it, and I'm I'm going to do the splash page. And as soon as the splash page is done, uh, and we work out all the all the logistics, then we'll launch it. But um, oh, Leaf is on. Uh, Amit, this is you're using ink or watercolor. I know you said earlier what they were, but this is inks. This is just, this is the Pelican's Drawing Ink A, just watered down. I'm going to use a little bit lighter brush. One of the things I'll do when I'm doing watercolors or inks, uh, ink washes, is um, I will use a, a hair dryer to, uh, um, to dry it, you know, because it's really wet right now. And um, I want to ink some... Uh, 
or I want to wash in some of his pinstriping here. So now I'm going to grab, what's this one? Just yeah. another Dick Blick, but this is a number two. Okay, so she's, somebody just asked what size are you using in the, set, in the Series 7, so tell what... Well, I just did all most of that with uh, um, with a number six brush, and now I'm going to use a number two for um, the uh, the pinstriping lines here. Oh, I love this question. So you had your work featured pretty prominently in a major motion picture. What's on your next artistic bucket list? Oh wow! Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, boy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've been pretty lucky. I mean, I've done some pretty cool things. Um, I guess so. You know, the, the 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 book here is is something I've always wanted to do. So that is that's going to be pretty fun. Ariel says you are teaching workshop today. You're just not getting paid. <laughs> Lots of lovely comments. Um, somebody says you're uh, with your Kickstarter. You'll be the new Bill Gaines. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, see, that's too wet in that area. So I'll have to go up here. Sergio says, which film was that? Oh. Which film? Yeah. Oh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Debbie Schaefer wants to know, what is the size of a splash page and how do you scan it? Oh, yeah. Splash pages for MAD are huge. Um, MAD and EC Comics uh, have always worked uh, what they call twice up, which is... Um, oh, I did those lines the wrong way, didn't I? Oh, well. Uh double print size. So um, a single page prints at eight and a quarter roughly uh, by 10 and a half. And so a double page is uh, 16 and a half by 21, which is really big, <laughs> right? And when I first started for MAD, um, I actually got, they, they were still sending um, the artwork already laid out like all the panels and word balloons and stuff. Lenny Brenner, the Lenny the Beard Brenner was a production guy at the time. And he would lay these things out and send me the boards uh, with all the word balloons and boxes and everything already drawn in. And I was, I got these huge boards in the mail. I was like, oh my God, look at how big these guys work. This is crazy. Uh, and I just started doing it that size. And then later on, I started making my own boards because they stopped doing that. And I just stuck with that large size. So yeah, they're big. My scanner, I've got a 12 inch by 17 inch scanner. So I can scan half of one page um, at a time and then I have to stitch them together. So if I'm doing a, a two page splash, uh, it's four scans. And then I have to, I have to, splice them together it's kind of a pain Leonardo Rodriguez is sending a big check from Barcelona all right hey Leonardo I watched you do a little live the other day it was fascinating stuff man I'm going to say one of the things I've always been impressed with is that you can talk and draw you're doing all this and answering all the questions and you can keep it all going and that no, not a, I, I, that's a live caricaturist thing. Yeah, that's absolutely a live caricature artist thing. I spent 20 years doing live caricatures almost full time uh, at theme parks. So yeah, I, um, I do, I'm able to talk and draw at the same time. Can't chew bubble gum and draw at the same time though. You don't like bubble gum. That's why I don't do it. people watching wow and uh, some good questions a lot of lovely comments a lot of like big questions right now 
Queen Artists, thank you, Tom. It's a pleasure to see you working. Keep clicking out. So I can probably share a little mad news, actually. Um, there was a little bit of a question as to whether or not with all this stuff going on and, and the fact that Diamond Distributors has stopped distributing um, new comics to comic book shops. Uh, they just announced that last week. Um, maybe they were thinking that DC or Matt, and particularly Mad was going to stop producing during this uh, this crisis, but nope, we're going to continue. So I do have um, uh, a new a new piece that'll be in issue number fourteen, and issue number thirteen is about to come out. Most most people get it via subscription anyway, via mail. So it's not that big of a deal that. It's not going to be in comic book shops, I guess. So that's nice. Contrary to, to uh, popular opinion, MAD is not, has not ceased publication. It just is uh, about 80% reprint material now, and it still has 20% new stuff, which um, so far I've contributed to. But just no more parodies, movie and TV parodies, which is a drag. Uh, Tiffany asked, after years of live caricaturing and talking while drying, do you have a standard pattern you use? Questions you ask, uh, or any questions you ask of people? Oh, you know, I always ask them what their favorite ride is. Um, they ask me where the bathrooms are. So they, that's the usual pattern between. Actually, I, I tell people that at its best, live caricature is a, a performance art. So that's, that's the part that I'm not the best at. Like, I, I can do it. I can put on the little dog and pony show and crack jokes and, and be entertaining and all that stuff. But it isn't, it isn't something that comes naturally to me. I sort of have to put on my game face and go out and perform. But uh, some live caricature artists are as good as at the banter and the and the the you know putting on the show and the entertainment aspect of it as they are the drawing part. And if you if you if you do both really well, then that is that's like the highest form of the art, in my opinion. All right. Did Mad Magazine give a reason why no more movie parodies? Uh. <laughs> Not really. Um, I mean, I can tell you what I how I speculate the reason no more movie parodies is because the buzzword in comics is IP, independent in intellectual property, and uh, everything that they do, um, they want to concentrate on stuff that has the potential for licensing, and you know, to make TV shows and movies out of it, or um, you know, toys or whatever. And satire has no IP. <laughs> you know, we're we're making fun of other things, and it it is something of in of itself, but it's not something that you license out. You know, so Mad has very little IP. It's got, I guess, Spy versus Spy, and uh, you know, Alfred, I guess, to a certain extent, but um, there isn't really much else. Um, so. Uh, I think that their decisions have basically been to reduce the costs of publishing the magazine so that they can keep the brand um, alive and still have um, a magazine out on the stands. So. It has just started downpouring here. You can hear it. Yeah. Well, I think I'm just starting to overwork this thing at this point now, so might be done. In one hour. All right. I got a couple more questions coming in here. Okay. Does the legal size 16.5 by 21 common with 67 pound paper, what paper do you use for large size format? Oh, okay. See, I do not use 67 pound paper to do um, my mad stuff. That's done on much bigger paper. That's uh, 12 by, um, that's like, you know, huge pieces. I get 20 by 30 pieces or 23 by um 30 and uh 
then um, cut them down. Actually, I did this the other day uh, where I showed people some uh, of my originals on my flat file. So as long as I'm done with this, that's just, all done. You just signed that. Somebody wants to know if there are Easter eggs in your signature. How many Easter eggs in your signature? No Easter eggs. Okay. All right, so let's. I'll, I'll show you some original mad stuff. Okay, Here we go. If you could simplify capturing likeness, how would you teach it? Simplify capturing likeness? Well, that's kind of what I teach. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. So this, these are my flat files here in my studio. This is my, you can see I'm a huge Superman fan. Um, let's see what we got in here. So this is a, this is like a, a typical mad set. This is all older stuff. I'm going to find something more recent. That's a that's a page from a Harry Potter parody. Um, this one, oh, okay. This is a page from uh, This Is Us. So that's a uh, that's huge, right? So let me, let me. Here's my caricature of Ian McShane, and here's this huge page. And that's all done the same way. Sorry, my shadow's on here. Uh, dip pens, brushes. Um, I use brushes for, you know, like the big black areas here. This is a dip pen, the texture there. Brushwork all in here. Some of the bigger lines are brushwork. This is a splash page from... Uh, So this, see, this is a two-page splash. So this is two pages. Uh, I have to do them on two separate pages, and that's that's from Toy uh, Christmas Story, right? Mad did a parody of um, the classic Christmas Story movie, and it's just a big scene. Are the balloons already on the pages when you get it? Uh, what I get is a layout with. Um, that does have the balloons on it. So here's here's an example of like my pencil work. So here's what I would send to Mad. So I would do, this is one of the Harry Potter movies. Uh, so they send me, if you imagine, just these panels are all blank and the word balloons are in there with the connecting lines and everything are already in. And then I draw in the area that they let me draw in. That, I, that I've got, and then I do the word balloon here, the little tails and stuff. And then um, uh, I send this to them, scan it and send it to them. So this is the actual print size, okay? And then I send this to them, and then they look it over and tell me, you know, how I screwed up and what I got to do to change it. And then I, uh, I, then I draw it all out and ink it on the big, uh, board. So actually, this happens to be. Oh, wait a minute. So this page is that page from Harry Potter. That. Hang on. All right. So that's the. It's a coincidence. So this this is the pencil, rough, of this page. And then this is the final. So I blow it up and I pencil. I draw it all out. See how you know it can be very rough in this form and then here's the final panel that's obviously a lot more drawn out so here's the here's little gag batman he's always hanging out in cemeteries you know checking out the wayne oh here's a question that was from before we didn't get to hey tom any tips for drawing a face with a particular expression without having a photo reference of the person making that expression. Yeah, I do that in Mad all the time. Um, I talk about that quite a bit, actually, in my book. Um, I go kind of go through the process of doing a movie parody. Um, 
Let's uh, let's see if I can switch this around so we can. There we go. Um, yeah. So what I do when I'm doing the um, when I'm doing a parody, I have to draw the same person over and over again at all sorts of different angles and with different expressions. And there's no way I'm going to find reference for all those faces, right? So I don't even try. What I do is I, I put together a page sort of like that one I did of Ian uh, McShane with lots of different angles of the face. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll find a couple of good expressions that I can use. And then I do what I call a keystone caricature on each page. So each page has got one caricature that's that I use a photo reference from for and is very detailed and has got you know a good solid likeness. Then in between those those keystone caricatures, I'll just fake it. So I'll do um, you know if somebody's got to be yelling or crying or you know looking uh, confused, I can I take the essential elements of those that face and I make sure those elements are in place with with these more cartoon versions of the person and then uh, I can I can have a lot more leeway and play around a lot more with the expression uh, and then just when I'm starting to lose the lose you and you're thinking does this really look like Ian McShane anymore then I've got a really good one of them that's like from a real reference and it brings you back and goes oh yeah that's Ian McShane so that's that's kind of how I do it um, well, and let's, do we have a, one more question? Which is your favorite movie parody you worked on? Ah, boy, that's a toughie. Um, I, as a big Batman fan, uh, I really enjoyed doing the three Christopher Nolan Batman movies. I did all three of those for Mad. So I don't know about which one. Maybe the second one with, um, with Heath Ledger as the Joker. Uh, that was one of my favorite ones. Um, that might have been it. So... Nope, I think that that might be the that might be our, <laughs> our call. So I want to thank everybody for being here. I believe this is uh, gets saved and people can watch it later. I'll, I'll link to it uh, on my blog and um, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, it was fun. Take care.